Good afternoon, Emma. How are you holding up today? Trying to stay positive, Dr. Harris, but it's hard. Some days it feels like I'm fighting an invisible enemy. I know, and it's okay to feel that way. But I'm here to remind you that you are not alone in this fight. We've been seeing promising signs with your treatment. Really? But there are still so many risks. There are risks, yes, but there are also victories. And every day, we learn more about how to turn those odds in your favor. You're stronger than you realize, and your body is responding well. Recovery isn't always a straight line. There are twists and turns, but with each step, you're moving forward. You always make it sound possible, even when my mind tells me it isn't. That's because it is possible. Your courage is half the battle, Emma. We're here to fight the rest alongside you. So, rest today, and we'll keep moving forward, one step at a time. Thank you, Dr. Harris. Thank you, Emma, for trusting me and yourself. We're in this together. Sophia, we need to hurry if we want to get there before visiting hours are over. I know, Michael. Just one more thing, I want to stop by the market on our way. The market? Now? Can't it wait until later? Emma's expecting us soon. Michael, I want to bring her fresh fruit. She hasn't been eating well, and hospital food doesn't help. I think it'll lift her spirits. I get that, I do. It's just, every minute counts right now. What if we're late? She needs more than just our company, Michael. She needs to feel cared for, to know we're thinking about her well-being in every way. It'll only take a few minutes. Meet me in the car. Do you think Emma's really going to be okay? I want to believe that, Sophia. But every time we visit her, she looks tired. We say the right things, but sometimes it feels like it's not enough. Michael, we're doing what we can. But it's not all up to us. We need to trust that God's watching over her too. I know, I know. But it's hard. Seeing her lying there, fighting, it makes me question everything. Why her? Why this? Sometimes, there's no answer that makes sense to us. But I have to believe there's a reason, even if we don't understand it. And maybe our role is to be her strength when she can't find her own, her prey when she feels too weak to. I wish I could be as strong as you. Sometimes, my faith feels fragile. It's okay, Michael. Faith doesn't mean never doubting. It means holding on, even when you're afraid. And right now, Emma needs us to do that, for her and for ourselves. You're right. We'll keep holding on, and we'll keep believing. For Emma. Yes. For Emma. Dr. Harris. You need to come to the ward. Emma's condition just took a turn for the worse. What happened? Her vitals are dropping, and her breathing has become shallow. We're stabilizing her, but it's touch and go. Let's go. Any changes in her heart rate since I last checked in? Yes, it's been erratic. She is unresponsive to initial measures. We need you now. Good morning, ma'am. Freshest fruit you'll find today. What can I get for you? Good morning, Mrs. Patel. These look perfect. How much for a dozen of these? For you, special price. 500 Nera for the dozen. 500 Nera. Come now, Mrs. Patel, you know I can't go back to my husband with empty pockets. How about 400? Ah, Sophia, you drive a hard bargain. But these are the finest oranges this side of town. How about 450, and I'll throw in a couple of apples for free. Hmm. <laughs> Tempting. But if I take those apples, you know I'll have to buy more to even out the bag. Let's stick to the oranges. 400, and you'll still make enough to buy your son-in-law that suit I saw you eyeing at the boutique. You don't miss a thing, do you? 400 it is. For you, only. You're too kind, Mrs. Patel. Thank you. These will mean a lot. Taking these to someone special, I assume? You always seem to have kindness to spare. A friend who needs a bit of sunshine today. Then these will do the trick. May she get well soon. Amen. We did everything we could. Every protocol, every step. But it wasn't enough. It's not supposed to end like this, especially when we fight so hard. She was responding just yesterday. 
What changed so fast? Sometimes, no matter how hard we try, the body decides differently. It's not fair, but it's reality. She was more than just a patient. Emma had a life, a family waiting for her to come home. I promised her we'd keep fighting. And we did, sir. We fought with everything we had. Sometimes, the hardest truth is knowing when it's beyond us. It doesn't make it any easier. But we gave her hope and comfort when she needed it. That is to mean something, even if we couldn't change the outcome. You're right. It has to mean something. She wasn't alone in this, and that matters. But it still feels like we lost more than just a patient today. So what do we do with her since her family members are yet to come? Just leave the body in her ward. When anyone comes for her, direct them to my office. Okay, sir. Well, well, look who's back in record time. I was half expecting to see you carrying half the market with you. You're lucky I didn't. I kept my word, didn't I? You did. And I have to say, I'm impressed. You're always thinking ahead, making sure everything's perfect. I knew we couldn't afford to be late today. Emma's waiting, and I couldn't let her down. And that's what I love about you, Sophia. You always manage to put others first, even when it's hard. Thank you for making sure today counts, for her and for us. We're in this together, Michael. Always. We did everything we could. Now we just have to trust that she's holding on. I know. It's just so hard to sit here and do nothing. Oh, the fruit. The fruit? I left the bag in the car. I wanted to bring it for Emma. It's just a small gesture, but it might lift her spirits. Of course you did. Go get it, love. She'll appreciate it, even if she doesn't know it yet. I will be back soon. All right, I'm here waiting. I need to see the doctor so we don't stay long because of the kids. Please, I need to see Emma. It's important. I know visiting hours are over, but this can't wait. I'm sorry, sir. I understand, but we have strict policies for a reason. Only immediate family and authorized visitors can be allowed in outside of visiting hours. She's like family to us. My wife and I. We need to be there for her. She's been fighting so hard, and I promised I'd be by her side. I wish I could help you, but I don't have the authority to make exceptions. Dr. Harris is on call tonight. If he approves, I can let you through. Can you at least page him for me? Please, I'll wait as long as it takes. Alright, I'll page Dr. Harris and let him know you're here. Just give me a moment. Dr. Harris said you should come over to his office. Thank you. I really appreciate it. Please how do I locate his office? The first office by your left. Mr. Michael, I'm deeply sorry to have to tell you this. Emma passed away a short while ago. No. There must be a mistake. She was fighting. She was getting better. I know how hard she fought, and how much hope we all had for her recovery. Sometimes, no matter how fiercely we battle, Life has a way of reminding us of its own timing. There is a time for everything, Michael. To everything there is a season, a time for every purpose under heaven. A time to be born, and a time to die. Emma's season came to an end today, and it is a sorrow that words cannot fully ease. A time to be born, and a time to die. Yes. Ecclesiastes reminds us that life moves in cycles. Emma's cycle has ended, but her memory, her impact, lives on in those who loved her. You were there for her when it mattered most. That counts for more than you can imagine. She don't have to end like that. After all the suffering, pains. Oh God, why would this happen? Emma's time here, as short as it may feel, had its purpose. The moments she shared with you, the strength she showed, those are things that will never be lost. They will carry on through the love you shared and the memories you hold. No, Michael, it can't be true. Dr. Harris must be wrong. She was getting better. She was smiling just yesterday. Sophia, listen to me. I wish it weren't true. I wish we could go back and change this, but we can't. Emma's gone. No. Don't say that, Michael. She's not gone. She can't be gone. She was supposed to come home. We were supposed to. Sophia, I know it feels impossible, like it doesn't make sense. But Emma fought as hard as she could. We all did. And now, 
Now she's at peace. But I wasn't ready to say goodbye. I thought we had more time. I know, my love. I thought so too. It's not fair, and it hurts more than words can say. But we have to hold on to each other now. Emma would want that. Today, we come together not just to mourn Emma, but to celebrate the incredible soul she was and the love she gave so freely. Emma wasn't just someone who passed through our lives. She was someone who touched every corner of them, leaving behind a warmth that will never fade. When I think of Emma, the first thing that comes to mind is her laughter. It was the kind that could fill a room, lifting even the heaviest of hearts. It wasn't just the sound, it was the joy in her eyes when she laughed, that light that reminded us that there's beauty even in life's simplest moments. To Emma, every day was a gift, and she made sure to unwrap it with hope, curiosity, and kindness. Emma was a friend, a sister, and, in the most profound sense, family. She was the kind of person who would drop everything to be by your side when you needed her. I remember countless moments when I would find her deep in conversation with someone who needed an ear, her hand on theirs, listening intently. She had this way of making you feel seen, valued, and understood. But Emma was also fierce. She fought every battle life threw at her with a strength that inspired us all. Even in her hardest days, she found a way to smile, to hold on to hope, and to remind us that courage is in the absence of fear, but the choice to keep moving forward in spite of it. Watching her fight with grace taught us resilience, showed us what it means to stand tall even when the world tries to push you down. To me and Sophia, Emma was more than a friend. She was a sister of the heart. She shared in our joys and stood with us in our struggles, never once wavering. There is an empty seat at our table now, a silence where her voice used to be. But in that silence, there is also the echo of her love, a love that continues to shape who we are. We often talk about legacies, about what someone leaves behind when their time here ends. Emma's legacy isn't just in the stories we tell or the memories we share. It's in the way we choose to live from this day forward, with more kindness, more courage, and more gratitude for the little things she cherished. Ecclesiastes tells us, to everything, there is a season, a time for every purpose under heaven, a time to be born, and a time to die. Emma's time here may have ended, but her purpose, her impact, continues. It lives on in each of us, in how we choose to love, to laugh, and to keep fighting even when the odds seem insurmountable. So, as we say goodbye today, let's not just remember the pain of her absence, but cherish the light she left behind. Let's carry the light with us, in how we care for one another and hold each other close. Because that's what Emma would have wanted, for us to live fully, love deeply, and never forget that even in the darkest moments, there is always a glimmer of hope. Rest well, dear Emma. We will miss you more than words can say, but we promise to keep your light alive. Finally, I've made it. The journey has been long, but here I am, at the gates of paradise. Welcome, Emma. Your journey on Earth has led you here. Let me search for your name in the Book of Life. I knew my faith would guide me here. I can't wait to see the faces of loved ones and feel the eternal peace I've longed for. Emma, my dear, I'm sorry. But your name is not here. No, that can't be true. I prayed, I gave, I attended services. I did what I thought was enough, surely there's been a mistake? Please check again. The book holds only those who fully surrendered their hearts and trusted wholly in the grace that was given. Deeds and rituals alone do not write one's name here. I was faithful in all of my service while on earth, I give my tithe, always in service on time, give to those in need around me. Please check again. I am a child of God. I have been purchased by His blood. All you said are true but just a little mistake the night you passage into eternal rest. A little mistake? How? When and where please? I will take you back to January 15th this year. Well, well, look who finally decided to join us. Emma, do you even know what time it is? Mr. Jenkins, I'm so sorry. Work ran late, and I tried my best to get here as quickly as I could. Excuses, Emma. We all have commitments, but the rest of us managed to be here on time. This is not the first time, and I'm beginning to wonder if you take this choir seriously at all.
I do take it seriously. It's just that? You used to be very committed, but off late I don't know. No more excuses. If you can't commit fully, maybe it's time you reconsidered your place here. I could hear the director's voice shouting at Emma. That was harsh. Emma has been so committed just that her work is so demanding these days and he should understand. She's been working so hard. It's not fair. I just wonder what he will say to us coming now if he could shout at someone that came before us like that. We better go back home cause I can't stand any shouting after stress from work. Come on. Let's go in there. I understand, Mr. Jenkins. I'll do better. I'm waiting for the rest to come. So let's start from the top. Emma, your life was filled with acts of kindness and faith. But one shadow remained that you never surrendered. Unforgiveness. Unforgiveness? But. I've prayed, I've served, I've given so much. How could this be? Yes, you did many good things. But the bitterness you carried in your heart, the refusal to let go of old wounds, kept you from true peace. It bound you, Emma, more tightly than you realized. I thought I had more time. Time to forgive, to release the anger. But I held on, thinking it would fade on its own. Forgiveness is not just an act, Emma. It is a state of the heart, an acceptance that frees the soul. Your unwillingness to forgive denied you that freedom. I see it now. All the mischances, the warnings I ignored. Oh, if I could only go back. The lesson is hard, but it is not the end of all hope. Even now, let your story be a warning, a message to those who still have time. Unforgiveness keeps many from these gates, but love can still reach those who listen. I understand now. If only others could know before it's too late.